Minister of Transport, Ms. Ndisiwe Shikunga, and I can confirm that uh, the Deputy Minister is here. We saw on uh, arrival together with the uh, MEC for um, Transport in the province, Mema Koma Makurupecha, they were um, inspecting vehicles here. And I can confirm that there are people who have been arrested. Uh, two days ago, we were at the Bay Bridge border post, and the Deputy Minister of Police indicated that South Africa is naked. There's a serious problem, problems of foreigners who are undocumented, and we have seen it here in this very same red block, where people were trying to pass into Zimbabwe and it was detected that they don't have documents. But let me bring now the Deputy Minister of Transport, Ms. Ndiswe Shikunga, to talk about this roadblock and also about the events for the day. Mama, good morning and welcome to SABC. Briefly take us through, we saw on your arrival, you were inspecting the vehicles with the um, MEC for, for transport. What is the latest? What did you find? You know, the, 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 the parking that we were inspecting, it has a driver who does not have a driving license no passport, uh, has passengers overloaded without any document, including passports. They are all foreign nationals from Zimbabwe. Uh, they are driving a car that is unroadworthy, overloaded, tires are worn out. It's, it's just chaos, as a matter of fact. Is, is, is this a common occurrence or is it something that is only happening in Limpopo? I think it is a common occurrence in, in every part of South Africa. Cars are being overloaded. People don't have uh, documents, they don't have valid driving licenses, cars are on road, but it, it is a common feature. And, and we think that we have got to have a, a, a frank discussion with our neighboring states, because these cars, it may not be all of them, but they are also responsible for some of these many accidents that we are seeing in South Africa happening, involving foreign nationals. And, 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 and this is increasing the statistics. It makes South Africa look bad. We look like we're failing to manage our roads and so on and so forth. So it cannot be. I think this is worrying. However, I'm happy that we are here and we've arrested them. So they know there's law in South Africa. And the police, they are here. They've taken them to police station. Let's talk about, you You spoke about unroadworthy vehicles that are passing here. And looking at the figures now, as compared to last year, where are we? Are we doing better? Are we uh, worse off than uh, where the country was uh, last year in terms of fatalities on the road? Nationwide, we're not doing well at all. Uh, we are at 767. Last year, we're at 676. So we have increased the numbers from the 1st up to the 17th. We were already at, seven, at 767. And with only one province that recorded decrease, which is Gauteng, all other provinces have registered increase in fatalities and even crashes. And, and, and we are so concerned that we are again approaching a long weekend after, I mean, before the, 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 the Christmas, and we still have another long weekend for the new year. And we are already at these figures that are alarming. And, and, and it is for this reason that we are here and everywhere the minister is somewhere, the minister of police is elsewhere, we're on the road to try and save the lives of South Africans because we can't go on like this. And two days ago, where the Bay Bridge border post, the deputy minister of police said that South Africa is naked. People are just walking in and out as, as, as they wish. And that has been confirmed because you, you, uh, people have just been arrested here, going on in route to Zimbabwe. They don't have passports. You've got people who are driving vehicles without licenses. What does that say about our officials, the police and traffic officers who are monitoring these people as they drive from northwest Gauteng into Limpopo to the Bay Bridge border post, Pondrit and other uh, port of entry? The, the, the question maybe is to say how did they come to South Africa and how were they hoping to leave South Africa? And, 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 and I will agree, therefore, with the Deputy Minister of Police that as South Africans we tend not to be patriotic and not to love our country. We would not be having these things if we really loved South Africa and we ensured that anyone who wants to come to South Africa has documents that are legal that enable anybody to come to South Africa. But we don't like our country, we're not that patriotic, many of us, they are those that are patriotic. But if you go to this border post, I'm telling you, come back depressed with what you see in those border posts. We're talking about Bed Bridge, go 
to Lubombo Border Post again and just sit and watch and witness what is happening. Go to Osho Border Post and sit and witness and see what is happening there. The criminality, the crimes that are being committed at those border posts. And, and, and it cannot be that we, can, we will blame foreign nationals. It's us who are allowing those things. They park us down there, they walk, they pay, they go back. And our South African officials, they then disappear to allow those cars that have paid their way out of South Africa or into South Africa. And and it cannot be. And, and they do that with vehicles that can only be dead vehicles. It can only be causing fatalities and, 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 and deaths on our roads. And we don't care. It, it's like as long as they've paid me, it's fine. And Mama, lastly, you understand that you are going to meet with families of uh, the victims of the N1 accident. Just briefly take us through what, what, what will be happening there. And also since uh, the, the time of the accident, did the department manage to reach out to them? What have you done so far? We, we attended the funeral and when I was there, I, I saw poverty. And we then uh, engaged the Department of Social Development and the Deputy Minister of Social Development put up a team of social workers to go and do this assessment of those families, including other neighboring I mean, neighbors, just to check. Because I said to her, what I saw there was nothing but real poverty. And therefore, the social development is doing its part. The road accident fund assisted the families with burials. And also, they, they assisted them with claims for those that qualify to claim, for instance, for loss of income or loss of support. Those have been, are, are being attended to. But we're going there to meet with them and to give them some grocery to say they as well can enjoy this Christmas. Because many, in fact, one young man sent an SMS to say thank you for bearing my brother. But he was a breadwinner. What it means is that now I have to leave school so that I take care of my siblings. And that was a painful uh, message from that young boy. And we think that the social workers must assist so that that guy, that young boy, do not leave school, continues to be at school, and the social workers can assist the family so that they leave without him leaving school because he's not at the age where he can actually find job to take care of the family. So we're going there to, to check on all those things and follow up. Of course, working together with the province, working together with the municipality to say what is it that we can also do to assist the family, working together with the other departments. That was the Deputy Minister of Transport, Mersin Disue Shikunga, indicating that from here they will be going to Sinuaba Rwani. You'll understand that that is an accident that we covered uh, extensively where about 26 people died. And she's now indicating that we are heading uh, to Christmas. It's two days uh, to go and we are talking about families that lost their loved ones, the breadwinners. And here they are today to say uh, as much as your loss, it's a loss to us. So we'll be there, we'll be talking to uh, their next of kin, we'll be talking to the recipients of uh, food parcels and we'll also talk to the MEC of transport in the province to shed more light as to what else has been done and going forward what will be they what will they be doing for those families and it's now back to you in the studio